Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Today, we're going to talk about limitless possibility unlimited possibility and what it is that you know you can step into and what it is that you can create you see the creative orientation is uh is is very 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 different to our normal orientation in life we've been taught to respond or react to the way that things are true but most of the time we we we, we were taught this is how things are this is how you are and this is you've got to make the best of what's here we never really got taught to be creative spirits. We we're always based on what was possible, what was available, what was limited, and also what was safe and the best option. As parents, you know, we tell tell our kids to to go for it, but at the same time, don't isn't it true? We want to avoid them being disappointed. You know, at the same time, when we go for things, we've gone for things before and it hasn't worked out, and we learned that that doesn't feel that good. So we've started and we get into habits and patterns where we start to believe what is possible. What's interesting is, is sometimes we get caught in patterns that are just no longer true. What was possible for you as a seven-year-old has, has no, you know, absolutely no place in your in what's possible for you as a 40-year-old, a 50-year-old, a 30-year-old, a 60-year-old. It, it has no place, it's not there. But these aspects of us still sit there believing what is possible, what we're allowed to do. And it's strange, whether we like it or not, some of us are still unconsciously asking for permission. You know, am I allowed to do that? Am, am I allowed to just be really, really, really rich and love my life? Am, am I allowed to be famous? Am I allowed to have a great family? Am I allowed to just do nothing and retire and read books? Am I allowed? Am I, am I actually allowed to just do art? Am I allowed to do that? Like, is that, is that, can I actually just do that? Or do I need to ask permission from someone? Isn't it interesting? It's like, so when we think about it, we're, we're adults, we, we, we are allowed to just create whatever we want, but there's parts and aspects of us that, that sometimes create this limitation. You know, is, is it possible for me to have a loving relationship? Is it possible for me to find someone who, who I can deeply connect with and share life with? Is that possible? Is it possible? Am I allowed it? And it's like, logically, isn't it? Logically, we look at it, we go, well, Logically, it's possible, but there's always this wondering in our mind, but is it possible for me? Isn't it? Like you, you go, I can see that others have been able to do it, but, but maybe is it, and we have this sneaky suspicion, maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe there's something that I can't do, do it with. So today's we're going to talk about unlimited creation. So remember that the creative part process is not opposite of the problem solving process. They're not opposites. <laughs> they're completely different things. They're, they're not opposites. They're, it's like, uh, you know, if you're, if you're speaking uh, two different languages, if you're speaking Spanish and English, they're not opposites. They're completely different systems, aren't they? They're different systems. Now, there's nothing wrong with the problem solving orientation in the right place. You know, if, if your house is burning down, it's not time to be wondering about what uh, decorations and, you know, like my wife always loves buying furniture. If your house is burning down, it's not the right time to be thinking, hey, what should we create in the, you know, in the living room? You know, how, how should we change the, you know, what should the wallpaper be? You know, what, what should we paint this room? Like, that's not the right time. If, if your house is burning down, there's a bloody problem. You got to put it out. You know what I mean? Like there, there's a time when there are problems and you got to deal with them. And, and so I think sometimes when I talk, uh, you know, about the problem solving reality, I want to make sure we're not getting confused that it, that our life is void of times when there's things we've just got to deal with. Hey, you just got to deal with it. Then there's there's other times when we realize, hey, you know what? All I'm doing is reacting and responding. We haven't actually spent much time learning the other thing, which is the creative reality. So really quickly. The problem solving or reactive reality or structure is when you take action to have something go away. When you take action to have something go away, something to change, something to improve. Does that make sense? It, it, that's what that is. So a problem solving reality is when you want something to go away. The creative reality is when you want to bring something into being. 
let that sink for a second. The creative reality is when you're bringing something into being. The, the problem solving or reactive reality is when you're trying to remove something. When you're trying to remove something. Now, the reason why we're so in the creative reality is, and we, we teach creative orientation in this work, is the problem solving reality does not give you any, uh, just by solving a problem does not guarantee you get what you want. Just because you solve a problem doesn't necessarily end up where you want to end up. You just end up without the problem. Does that make sense? We just end up without it. And so if we, if we, if we uh, set out to solve the problem that we don't have enough money, it doesn't necessarily mean we end up in the life that we love. We just end up not having the problem of having no money. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Do you get that? It, just because there's because you solve the problem, it doesn't mean you end up anywhere. And so then you, you go, well, now I'm here. And the only thing you knew is the problem. So your brain ends up taking you back there. So, so we must get into the creative structure. The creative structure is focused what you bring into being. And it's a new way of thinking. It's about focusing on what you're bringing into being without looking at anything the way it is. So I want you to think of your life right now and, and everything that's going on, you know, or where you're at in life. And, and uh, I want you just to get one of those, you know, big whiteboard erasers. One of those big whiteboard erasers. And I want you just to erase it all. And I want you to imagine that right now, right now you have erased, you have completely, it's a blank slate. You're here. I'm here and we're on this call. Okay, so, and we just, just, it is, it's just a blank slate. Here's the question. If today you were asked one question and that question would shape your future, this would be it. Starting out from scratch today, if you're starting out from scratch today, only knowing what you know, how would you create your life moving forward? No reaction allowed, no limitation allowed, just you and me here, two human beings meeting. How would you create your life moving forward? What would you choose to create? Start filling up the chat box. What would you choose to create without basing it of, of what you've already have, without basing it on what's possible, without basing it on some story? You and me right now. I ask you right now, it's a blank slate. How would you choose to create your life? What would you choose to create? How would you choose to spend your day? Right now, there's nothing. You, you have no, there's nothing. It's, it's just you and me. How would you choose to create it? Someone already putting in limitations, something to sustain me. No, what would you really create? What would you love to create? No limitation, nothing. How would you create it? Right now, how would you create? Now, there's a few rules. There's a few rules uh, when, you're, when you're creating, okay? There's a few rules. The first thing, you must be able to form a mental picture. There must be a destination of every creation, okay? So a creation must be something you can actually visualize. You can actually say, well, I can imagine being in that creation, okay? So that, that's one. The second, every creation cannot rely on other people. They have their own creation. So you can create yourself to do something, but you can't create for others. That's not your responsibility. You can create, you can create yourself to uh, have an amazing uh, family adventure, but you can't create how the family is going to respond. <laughs> you see? So, so the, the, first, the first is you must be able to visualize it. The second, you, you know, you can't create world peace if a world doesn't want peace. Okay, so it can't involve other people. I'm sorry, you can only create what you want to create and be as you want to create and do what you want to do. You create that. Make sense? You can't use comparative terms. You can't use comparative terms. So you can't say, I want more of this because you're comparing it to a problem. Whenever you use comparative terms, you're saying, I want more or I want less or I want this or I want that. Okay, so those are three things. Who's writing these down? Comparative terms can't involve someone else. You must be able to have a mental picture. These are three things. Would someone pop these in the chat, the chat box for me? 
Um, so mental picture, you must be able to get a mental picture. Uh, can't involve other people. It cannot have comparative terms. You don't want to say, I want to have a, uh, uh, more vitality. You want to be able to say, what is it you're going to be doing? You want to be able to run a marathon. You don't want to say, I want to have less body weight. You want to be able to say, I want to have this body. You see, you want to, you want to get clear on what it is you're creating, not, not relating it to anything else. Okay. So those are the three. The fourth one is it can't be a process. It can't be a process to get you somewhere else. That's not what you actually want to create. That's controlling. You can't say, I want this to get this. No, you just want the big thing. So you can't say, I want, I want to, you know, I'm going to, I would create going to the gym five times a week. What, what for? You know, what, 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 unless that's your actual end result, that's, you know, you, you know, that's, that could be true. But typically I just want to go to the gym because I want to be strong. So it can't be a process. You, you, you can't create the process because the, the process is, is you not focusing on what you want to create. It's you trying to, trying to uh, control it. So you can't focus on the process. So those, those are four. I've got a few more. I'll just let you guys sit with those. So, so right now, uh, you're here. Is, is you got a blank slate? You can create whatever it is that you choose. Whatever it is that you choose. Whatever it is, out of all the possibilities, infinite potentials, infinite possibilities. How would you choose to create it? Nothing. You, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to base anything on any reactive story, any narrative, any challenges, any problems, anything that's happened. Any nothing. None of that. Your blank slate. What would you choose to create? And, and it's a really good question. In fact, it's the first question we're going to be asked while well, in the third week of the creator course that we're, we're unpacking, we're going to be stepping into this. And it's so, it's so nice. Uh, in the, uh, the, the last, the last part of the, the process is, is, in, is be as specific as possible, be as specific as possible meaning the more specific you can be of what exactly it will be, the better, but don't go further than that. Be as specific as possible. And, and so, so, this is, uh, so this is really interesting. So we, we, we're creators here. Creators bring things into being. So that's, that's what we're bringing, we're bringing into reality. Yeah, be as, be as specific as possible. I love it. And so, so who, who likes this question? I love this question. This question I've been working on myself was you starting from scratch today. Not, you're not based on nothing else. Just you're here. How would you create it? Because that is such a great creative question. And then the next question is, well, what was the person I would need to be to, to be there? So uh, along the way, we, we stopped just creating what we love. Isn't it true? Isn't it true? And uh, we stopped just saying, what, what would I love to create? And we just kept on basing things on reaction. You know, we said, well, I need to be good at this. Well, I need to have this. Well, I need to respond, react to the circumstances. Give me a yes if you agree. We spent our whole life responding and reacting. We had these sort of parents and this sort of education and this amount of money. And we had this thing. And then we had to get to this school and do this amount of work. And we had to do this and this. And everything was based on here's your circumstance. How do you get the best out of the circumstance? Who agrees that this is what you're given? You got to get the best out of it. And, the, and what's the best looks like this. We never got, we never just said, hey, what if I was just starting from scratch? We never got to just say, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, a new reality will open of where I'm a creator. It just was this um, constant, never ending, you know, just responding and reacting and band aid after band aid to the situation. So who agrees with that? We just kept on saying, well, this is what I've got. How will I, how will I make the most out of it? Well, this is what I've got. How will I make the most out of it? Well, well, now this is here. How do I make the most out of it? And it's beautiful at times just to go, okay, so how would I create it from now? If I actually chose to be the creator, what happened is is along our life from age zero to now, we picked up a lot of beliefs and limitations that said, you know, we can't just be a creator, you know, we got to play it safe. Do we don't want to have disappointment? And, uh, you know, when we pick these things up, uh, they, they can sit in our unconscious as little patterns of information. We don't even know it's there. We just know that our life is based on what our unconscious patterns believe is possible. Okay. That, that's that's what we believe whatever whatever our, well, that's what's true whatever you have in your life has nothing to do with what's really possible it has everything to do with what's unconsciously possible now your unconscious creates the balance point in your life 
and it's set from your super conscious, which we'll, we'll get into, you know, today. So I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. I remember a, a very early time in my life. I was sitting at, we've got some New Zealanders on the call, got some Kiwis in New Zealand. Uh, you know, our main sport that we play is rugby. Uh, so kia ora to all my Kiwis out there. It's great to have you here. Now, so I'm, I remember very early, it was about, I think, uh, early 90s and uh, rugby became professional. So I went from, you know, this thing that, that all, the, all the top players, they still had jobs and, uh, and they would just play because they loved it. And there was this shift in the late 80s and early 90s where rugby became professional. And my, my father's a big rugby supporter and, you know, we would sit down. And so Americans, you can imagine, it's like, you know, so watching the football and that, that would be the, the way I'd connect with my father. Every Sunday I'd sit there and I'd, I'd watch it. And so there's this big, um, there's this big transition happening. Hey, and, and I remember it, the transition was, there was all these players transitioning from, they were, they were, you know, they had jobs and then they would play this sport on the weekend. And it was, you know, they played it because they loved it. And there was a transition to, to getting paid to play. And, um, uh, some of the some of the players were getting paid and some of the players weren't and i remember my dad you know he would go off at these guys taking money and he said you know he used to say it should be enough that you just get to play for your country you need to get paid for it and i remember it so clearly that my dad my my guy my hero says you shouldn't do it for the money it should be enough. You know, he said, I would, I remember, I remember so clearly said, I would give my left leg to play in that team. And these guys need to get paid for it. He'd sit there and he would drink his beer and he would, and he would go off. And it became this rattle in my head. It became this rattle. Don't just do it for the money. Doing it for the money is bad. You can't just do it for the money or you can't even do it for both. In fact, if you're making money, Doing something you love, it's bad. It's bad. And, and, and that's what was there. And so I'd have this rattle. So I was, I was allowed to make money in things that I didn't love. My whole life, I, was, I could make money if I didn't love it. But if I loved it, oh, you know, you should just love it. Now, that doesn't make any sense, hey? It doesn't make any sense. If you love it, why not get paid for it? That just seems great. But there's this thing in my head, well, if I love it, why should... I shouldn't get, I shouldn't also get paid for it. Like that's greedy. And I had all these, and it doesn't make any sense because, you know, I, I love teaching. I love what I do. I love this, but, but I'd have this thing in my head, like, well, gosh, what's there. And isn't it interesting if you think about some of the patterns or structures, who said that that pattern or structure is true. And, and, and so when you look at your life and you see, you see results none of it is actually reality and what's true. It's not reality. It's just the reality that you have decided on. Mm. And so you can have anything you want, anything, as long as you're, as you're it. See, I could never have that because I wasn't it. I wasn't, I wasn't it. Oh, my identity wasn't allowed to be that. That was offensive to an aspect of me. I wasn't it. So what would happen? Whenever I started loving it too much, the money would go. It would go because I wasn't allowed. That's not allowed. That's unsafe. I'm going to be one of those guys on the TV that dad yells at. Hey, now what house is true for you? How is this true for you? How have you limited what is possible for you? Because truthfully, I wanted to be able to do things I love and make money from it. But, but what, is, what is true for you when this comes for your, your finance, finances? But what about, what about how is this true for what you really want? When you wrote down how you had created in life, you got to ask yourself, well, why haven't you created that yet? Hey, it's not talent, is it? It's not talent because there's people that are way less talented than you that have been able to do it. It's not hard work. You're hard working. Hey, it ain't hard work. True. You, you put in the time. It's not desire. It's not motivation. You know, it's not looks. There's people, you know, there's, there's, it's not looks that gets amazing relationships. There's beautiful people that have terrible relationships and then others, you know, that have great. It's, it's not that it's not 
what is it? It's not being born in the right time or place, is it? Because you can't put it, you, it's weird because you can't put it, you can't really put your finger on it. It's like you can always find a, a, someone who's, who's breaking the, the norm, isn't it? You know, you can see people who were obese that are, that are now fit and healthy. So it's, it's not that, is it? So, so you got you got to ask, well, if it's not talent, if it's not hard work, if it's not willpower, why is it that there's this limit on me? Hey, why is it that this limit? And, and it's not your fault either. And so there was some aspects of me uh, that were just running old structures. There were just aspects of me running an old structure, like the seven-year-old version of me that, it, it, well, I don't know how old I was, whatever age uh, I was, there was still running a pattern that you couldn't both love what you do and get paid really well. Does that make sense? That, that, that was a structure and it needed to be revised and updated. You know, I, 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 I love taking a lot of positive stuff from, from people that I grew up around, but that's one that I, I would prefer not to take on. <laughs> Who agrees with that? It's like, hey, there's lots of good stuff, you know, but, but hey, how about that? No. I'll leave that one for you, Dad. You can you can have that one. Hey, and there's no no judgment. It's all good, you know. So, so there might be some things that you need to upgrade. There might be some old some old voices in there that you're not conscious of. Now we don't need you to be conscious of it because we're going to work in the sub the super conscious. Does that make sense? Here's the key: if you, if you're not able to experience it in your life, it's because there's a pattern running there. True, there, there's a pattern there because it's it's not anything else. It's not anything else. So, so most of everything that we do is unconscious, hey? and that's a good thing. If you had to remember how to brush your teeth consciously, I don't know who's ever like hurt their wrist or their arm and, uh, and tried to brush their teeth with the wrong arm before. <laughs> and you have to learn something new. You're like, what the heck? This feels completely weird, you know? And, and so we're so lucky that everything is unconscious from writing to talking to, to brushing our teeth to everything. It's unconscious. If you had to be conscious of it, we'd be very, very, very ineffective. So I'm so grateful uh, that we have this, this part of us that can get trained, okay, it can get trained. Um, neuroscience shows that it's plastic. Uh, however, we have some, some aspects, some trained parts of us, some trained, what we're going to call uh, part-time personalities that are trained and they're running old programs underneath, underneath consciousness that is showing up in our reality true and we and that's just true it's just true and if they weren't there and this is a big thing you know you see this with a lot of um, um sports stars hey how many how many of you heard of sports stars or movie stars that end up going broke you know alan iverson was basketball player massive hero of, of mine you know had 50 million a year contracts you know uh, well maybe not them but 40 million a year contracts and, um, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars somehow ended up broke. How's that even possible? You might think, yeah, unconscious patterns, unconscious patterns. You see, uh, you, you know, we, we hear about this all the time. The, the people that have all the looks and the fame and they have, you know, amazing relationships and somehow they break them apart. Unconscious patterns. What's safe? What's possible? You see. So even if you throw someone into it, who, who's heard of like the the, the lottery winners? Um you know, I think even in, in the UK, they're called lotto louts, lottery louts. Uh, my friends from the United Kingdom, lottery louts, that's what they're called, aren't they? And, and these are people who win the lottery and don't know how to handle it. And their life gets absolutely ruined by um, uh, winning the lottery because they cannot handle it. They, the money completely throws it, they, they, their structures aren't ready for it. And they're, they're worse off. They end up worse off because they go, they, it's because of unconscious patterns, it's instructions that are there. And so we have lots of part-time personalities that are running, hey? We have lots of um, part-time personalities that are running. It is a shame, isn't it a shame? And so here's what's true is you need to be it. You need to upgrade, you need to shift into it so that you can accept what's already there. So, so we, have, we have lots and lots and lots of different uh, aspects of us, you know, that are working, and some of them aren't working the in, in the way we'd like. Like, and, and let's uh, where are my coaches? Let's talk about um, sub personalities. What are some sub personality, part time personalities that we have uh, spinning away in the background? So we have aspects of us that want to be rich, and aspects of us that think that uh, being rich is bad. We have aspects of us that are confident, aspects of us that are shy. We have a part time personality that wants to stay up late and keep watching Netflix. 
And then another part-time person that doesn't want to be tired in the morning. We have all of these different aspects, hey? <laughs> and so some of them need an upgrade. Some of them need an upgrade. Some of them might be like the one I'm sharing with me is that I, I ha have an aspect that was saying that I, I couldn't uh, be abundant in doing things that I love. True. We're going to focus on one thing, which is to completely live that unlimited life that we just wrote down. Hey, Chris here again. I hope you really enjoyed that session. Obviously, it was streamed live to our Magnet Mind Masterclass uh, coaching program. If you'd like to be involved in that program, please do reach out. Uh, we do have spaces you can uh, apply for and you can join. So do let us know if it's something for you. And again, thank you so much for your support. Subscribe, like, and share this content so we can reach millions of people just like you and help them become conscious creators. Have a great day. Stay super conscious. Oh,